Okay, and welcome to the second tutorial on ellipses. Now we're going to look at our second objective, how to convert the equation of an ellipse from general form to standard form. So when you look at this example in your notes, this is a conic section that's in general form. I know this because I've got my quadratic terms first, then my linear terms, then a constant, and it's set all equal to zero. So we need to figure out why this conic section is an ellipse and not, say, a circle or a parabola that we've already learned. Well, first of all, I know it cannot be a parabola because if I see both quadratic terms, it cannot be a parabola. Remember, the parabola only has one one quadratic term. So the next thing I'm looking at is why is this not a circle? Well, if you remember the definition of a circle, at least the, the general form, says that the coefficients of my quadratic terms have to be the same. So since one of them is 4 and one of them is 1, they are not the same, therefore this must be the ellipse. We'll talk about why this is not a hyperbola when we get to the hyperbola tutorials. So this is an ellipse. I don't necessarily know what the center is or any the other parts. I don't even know if this is necessarily a horizontal one or a vertical one. Not until I'm finished putting it into standard form. We're going to be putting it into standard form using our complete the square method again. So what we're going to do is we're going to group our x terms together, 4x squared negative 8x. I will not put a blank yet because it's not ready for completing the square. But I'm also going to put the y terms together, y squared and plus 6y. I actually could put a blank here, but I'm not going to. The y terms are ready for completing the square. The black ones are not. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's subtract our 9, since the constant is something we'll just put on the other side. And I'll say that this is all equal to negative 9. So when you go back and, learn and remember how to complete the square, completing the square only works when the leading coefficient is 1. So that's why the red terms, the, the y terms are ready to go, but the x terms are not ready to go. What we need to do, if we have a coefficient other than 1 in front of our quadratic, quadratic term, we need to divide that number away. It doesn't just magically disappear, but what happens is it comes out it factors out of our two terms. So if I divide the 4 away from the x squared, I'm left with 1x squared. And if I divide the 4 away from the negative 8x, I'm left with negative 2x. Now I'll put my plus blank. Like I said, the red one was ready to go anyway, so I'll go ahead and do that. There's no factoring involved. I'll put plus blank. Over here, I've got negative 9, but since I put two blanks on the left side, I better put two blanks on the right side. Now we go to complete the square. Half of this number is 1. 1 squared is 1, so that goes in that blank. Half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9, so that goes in that blank. Now we have to figure out what goes in these blanks. I know many of you think that it might be just 1 and 9, but that's just not true. It's 4 and 9. Now let's see why. 9, obviously, because we added a 9 here. Why is this a 4? Well, think about it. We added 1 into this blank, but that's not all that happened to this side of the equation. This blank is inside this set of parentheses, and this set of parentheses is being multiplied by 4. So if we put 1 inside this blank, we're actually adding 4 units to this side of the equation. So therefore, we have to add 4 units to account for that on the other side of the equation. That's the one little subtle thing you've got to watch out for with ellipses. Okay, now the rest is going to be pretty good algebra. We can factor this into x minus 1 quantity squared. We can factor this into y plus 3 quantity squared. I assume that you now know why 1's minus and 1's plus. The negative sign comes right from here. The positive sign comes right from here. Okay, add up these things, and I believe the 9's actually cancel out, and we just get a 4. We're very close to standard form. We just need this set equal to 1. So whatever number happens to be here, we're just going to divide all three terms by that number. Since we need 4 to turn into a 1, we'll just divide by 4, and we'll divide by 4, and we'll divide by 4. That will cancel out to a 1. Over here, hey, look at that. We actually canceled this out as well. So we have x minus 1 quantity squared. And over here, we have our y plus 3 quantity squared over 4. And that's all equal to 1. And we have our standard form 
for this ellipse. Now you might say, wait a minute, what's happening to this denominator? Okay, go ahead and put that over 1 if that's going to help you. If you understand that, then you understand this tutorial. That's all I've got for you. Actually, I do have a couple tries on the next page. I am going to um, graph this just to practice graphing a little bit more. So if you'd like to watch that, then um, continue watching. Otherwise, you can fast forward a little bit to the two tries. OK, so thank you for still watching. We're going to graph this. We're going to find the center, which is 1, negative 3. And we'll plot that. 1, negative 3. There we go. Now we need the value of a. The value of a comes from a squared, which is the bigger one. So a is 2. So I'm going to count up 2 and down 2. I know that I'm going vertically because the a, or the a squared, is with the y. And that's the vertical. So let's count our vertices here, it looks like it's 1, negative 1, and 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. 1, negative 1, and 1, negative 5. Our co-vertices, label that CV. Co-vertices come from the value of B, and the value of B is equal to 1, the square root of 1, which is 1. So B goes left and right, so just a little guy right there. Okay, so we've got 2, negative 3, and 0, negative 3. 2, negative 3, and 0, negative 3. We've got our foci to do next. I'll put them over here. The foci require us to find c, so let's go ahead and do that math. This is c equals the square root of a squared minus b squared. So c is going to be the square root of 4 minus 1. c is going to be the square root of 3. And if you plug that into your calculator, just to get an approximation, the square root of 3 is approximately 1.7. I know it's irrational, it goes on forever, but we'll say 1.7 is good enough. So 1.7 is going to be going upward, 1.7, ah, just squeeze it right on in there, and down 1.7, ah, we'll put it right in there. So let's count those actual ordered pairs. So if this is going up 1.7, that means that there's 0.3 left right here to get to that next little crosshair. So when I go 1, I'm going to go down 1.3-ish. Okay? So 1, comma, negative 1.3. My other focal point is over 1, of course, and then down 1, 2, 3, 4.7. Negative 4.7. So 1, comma, negative 4.7. Okay, let's go ahead and graph this. It's a little guy. The tinier the dots are to each other, the easier it is to make it look like a pretty good ellipse. Let's do major axis and minor axis. The major axis is 1, 2, 3, 4 units long. The minor axis is 2 units long. Thank you for watching that graph. I hope that helped you. Now, here are our two try problems. I've put one of them in standard form for you to graph and one of them in um, general form for you to put into standard form. And if you wish to graph it as well, go ahead and try that. So at this point, if you would please pause and try these problems yourself um, and then come back and check to see that you did it correctly. Push pause now. Do it now. Do it now. Thank you. Okay, so thank you for trying that, and I just performed all of these operations and graphed them. Um, all of the ordered pairs that I'm looking for and the major and minor axes are here. And uh, I don't know about you, but when I graphed this one, it kind of looked like Stewie's head from Family Guy. So, of course, the green part is all nonsense. It's not part of your graph, but I just decided to draw a little Stewie right there. When I did the second one, the most important part, of course, is right here in this um, oval here. Uh, this is our standard form. You should have gotten that. If you chose to also graph that, then I, I put all, there wasn't much room, so I tried to put all the little information here. Here's the major and minor axes, of course, and it looks like Stewie went to sleep, so there he is. All right, guys, thank you very much for trying this, and we'll see you in class to practice all of it. See ya.